My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. After many months spent in our homes during the pandemic, probably many of us have grown more comfortable entertaining ourselves at home, like watching films, movies, or a series on streaming services. Some of us would have our favorite television show category, from mystery television shows and dramas and even makeover shows. I realize that there are lots of uh, addictive makeover TV shows, from home makeovers to lifestyle makeovers and style makeovers. Admittedly, some shows have questionable ideas, but some shows focus on the outside transformation as much as the inside. So given the chance to watch those shows, I don't know if any of us would ever think about how he or she would change himself or herself. Like maybe to be inspired to have a tummy flattening or a hair makeover or a nose enhancement or cellulite suction or even a dental work. The difference can be great, but the question is, for how long? By contrast, when the Holy Spirit changes us, His changes are permanent. When we allow our Lord to make us new, we become a new creation. And that happens for free, of course, with our cooperation. When we become a new creation, that means what we become is not subject to decay or to destruction. What is not fresh is made fresh and it stays fresh. What is not attractive becomes beautiful and it stays beautiful. What is unwanted becomes wanted and is always wanted. As St. Paul reminds us, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So we need the grace to be able to look at things in a new way. We need the grace to transform us into new creatures. This is what we can ask from our Lord as we reflect on His words in today's Gospel. Today's Gospel where we see Jesus at the meal with Matthew and his friends. Of course, Jesus was not eating and drinking in big banquets every day. The banquet where we find him in today's gospel is uh, in the context of the celebration of the calling of Matthew, a publican who collected taxes from the Jews. So from his collection, he had to give a certain amount to the Roman conquerors of the Jews and probably the remainder he kept for himself. That's why publicans were considered among the worst people in Jewish society. So Matthew was a publican, but Jesus took notice of him and he said to him, You follow me. That is to say, come be my disciple. So Matthew got up and followed our Lord and invited him to his home and prepared a banquet for him. So imagine how that banquet must have been like, considering the wealth of Matthew. So Jesus is in that banquet with his disciples who are also eating and drinking and enjoying a lot because with all the work that they were doing, they must have been really hungry. They were celebrating with Jesus and looking at the newly converted Matthew. But then the scribes and the Pharisees, they have come along to scrutinize Jesus and his followers suspicious that uh, the teachings of Jesus were not in agreement with the practices that they were used to. So they accused Jesus, telling him that he and his followers are not following their traditions of fasting. The answer of Jesus is simple. He said, there is a time and a place for both fasting and feasting. Furthermore, he offers them a new understanding of their religion by telling them, no one tears a piece from a new garment and sews it on an old garment. 
Otherwise, the new will be, will be torn, and the piece from the new will not match the old. I thought that that could also apply to us, because sometimes we try to patch up the holes in our lives, but what is really needed is a deeper change. That is why we pray so that Jesus can tell us what needs changing in our life. Let's listen to Him. Let's allow Him to direct us. Going a little further in the Gospel, Jesus also says, No one puts new wineskin or new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. New wine must be put into fresh wine skins. I notice that the word new comes up several times in this gospel because that is really what happens where Jesus is present. There is newness. There is transformation. With the coming of Jesus, everything is now new. With him, every day is a new day, even if perhaps for some of us, we are still in a lockdown because of the COVID pandemic. But today, Lord, we ask you to give a new shape to our lives. We know that you do not want us to be a patchwork of old habits and of half-hearted efforts to change for the better. But for this change to happen, Lord, we cannot just count on our willpower, of which at times we have very little. You know how much we want to be made new. Help us, Lord, to let go of those habits and those practices that make us old on the inside, those stubborn defects and obsessions that hold us back from being the new creatures that you want us to be. Give us new wineskins, Lord, because the old wineskins can never hold the abundance of newness of transformation that you pour out to us on every new day that dawns. So we ask you, Lord Jesus, for flexibility of heart and mind so that we can open ourselves to the challenges that come every day. With your help, we want to leave behind what St. Paul called the old self so that we can be new creatures in you, Jesus. It's difficult to break from uh, the sinful habits of our old self, from the old wine, which is what we're used to. And it's much easier to let our hearts grow old, to grow hard. But we realize that the new wineskins are needed so that we can continue to accept the love of Christ so that we can learn new ways to love others especially those who don't love back new ways to reach out to others including those who won't forgive us then our Lord can transform our hearts into elastic wineskins capable of receiving good wine the good wine of interior renewal the good wine of a new experience of life. So as we pray about this now, looking for areas in our lives where we need to be transformed, where we need to be renewed, we welcome your presence, Lord, because your presence frees us and makes us more flexible. Flexible, perhaps, to deal with the person that we find difficult to deal with, or flexible in the frustrations and the small annoyances of each day. And as we conclude this uh, short time of prayer, we ask our Mother Mary's intercession that she may preserve us in our Lord's presence, our Lord's presence which gives us joy, which always provides for us, just like in that other banquet of the wedding feast, in Cana. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. 
my mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.